OK, well, the debate's already started in the studio. We're watching <laughs> that and Owen's going, I think it's wrong that we've already got to this point. So you think we have to wait till the end of the season to do this? Definitely. You just said, you asked Michael before, is the title race going to go to the wire? Yeah, it is going to go to the wire because there's one point in it. And the point is, Raheem Sterling deserves to win Player of the Year and so does Virgil van Dijk. I think whoever wins the Premier League title, it should be theirs. I think if we decided, what, they used to do that a couple of months ago or decided a couple of weeks ago, how can they do that with four games left? I think, I think it's ridiculous. It's a good point, because you Very always good. need to know the impact those players have had for their club this season before you can determine their, their achievement. And it is a vote player of the season. And, and this season that we're experiencing... Is... Not a player of 28 games. No, exactly. And the, and the cast, the votes, I think, in years ago was even earlier, wasn't Obviously. it? You know, so it's... It's difficult. You almost tend to vote at that moment in time who might be performing and playing Jake, well. we have an online poll on the show. Yeah. We, we have people coming in, sending messages and saying, right, you can vote here. How, how, I don't understand. We See, have, a, you know we what, have the technology. It's a bit old school, isn't it? You could, you could all walk off the pitch on the final day and the last thing that, that the clubs are told to do... With you know, the press club officer. Secretary with just an goes, iPad, yeah. Here's an iPad, vote for your player. Bang, Wait, bang, 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 bang. Ten seconds. Within five minutes, you could have the votes collated somewhere and it can be announced. This is 2019, not 1919, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I can't go against that. Of course, in an ideal situation, you would, wouldn't you? I'm not sure whether, I'm not sure why it is so early. But also, I'm not sure whether I totally agree with whoever wins the league wins it. I'm not sure about that. You know, if someone's the best player and the other one, it doesn't matter what they've, yeah. how many trophies they've won away. If they're the best player, then they're the best Sattler player. Last it's year. not like, exactly, yeah. So, I agree that it probably should be later, but I don't necessarily... I think Owen should be able to say now it's Sterling or Van Dijk, and I don't think he should have to know... Well, one thing I would say is Van Dijk has had the biggest impact individually on his team, to take them defensively from where they were last season with Alisson and put them there. So he, I would say individually he's had the biggest impact. But equally, Raheem Sterling's impact with De Bruyne having the injuries that he's had has been off the charts. So I think, in a way, they both deserve it, and I think... If somebody carries his team to the Premier League title, those two will have a big impact on it. So leaving it to see who wins the title is, a, is, is an important... Look, they do that in American sports, and I, I think there's something to it. If you were still playing, all three of you, who would you vote for? Such a tough call, this one, isn't it? I mean, as a defender, uh, Van Dijk, is, especially playing at Southampton, I saw the, the colossus he was at Southampton, but he's taken it on to another level now at Southampton again... Uh, at Liverpool, sorry. Um, and as, as somebody that wasn't most creative, seeing a Sterling develop and mature as a player and how he's sort of scoring goals now and the assists that he's bringing to the, the, what is a top, top side full of stars um, is to be admired as well. Sterling would shade it slightly for me. Van Dijk for me. Why? I think he's the best defender in the world. Um, I think he's just, as Owen said, taken his game and Liverpool's game and Liverpool's defence just to a total different level. Um, Sterling is one of the best attacking players in the world, but, you know, there's others that I would... But I can't think of anyone that, that comes close to Van Dijk. And I think this season he's uh, he's been absolutely outstanding. I think they're both far and away the best two. I'm looking down the list and looking for third, probably, you know, Mane, maybe... Hazard, the, Bernardo Silva's had an unbelievable yeah. season, but hasn't he? you're arguing about who's... You know, there's no question it's one of two, isn't it? They are. It's a bit like yeah. the Premier League. There's two that are head and shoulders above everyone else at the moment. OK, who wins it for you? One for Sterling, one for Van Dijk. There we go. You have the casting I think, vote. I think considering it's April and Liverpool have one loss is astonishing, really, at the, with all the investment in the Premier League. So in that sense, I'd say... I'd say Van Dijk, but I still I think it's incredibly harsh that Raheem is, 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 is not going to win something. But uh, just for sheer impact and only one loss in April, I'd say impact-wise it's Van Dijk. What do you think, Jake? I think Raheem Sterling. But I'm here to ask the questions. Good. Would, so would, with, Van Dijk 2-1. With Sterling's presence in the, the, the young player nominations, could you see if he doesn't win... Oh, player, yeah, then yeah, they, that's... Then win young player. Yeah, he's won that already, hasn't he? Should he be in there, though? Let's talk about this young player shortlist. So we've got Raheem Sterling and Bernardo Silva, Marcus Rashford, Alexander-Arnold, 
Declan Rice and a young man who we think is brilliant, don't we, at Bournemouth. Brooks is having a fantastic first season. He's a sort of player where this will make a real difference to him. Whereas Raheem Sterling, he's had half a career already. Bernardo Silva, by the way, right, you have to be 23 on the first day of the season to qualify for a young player. He was 24 on the first day of the season. He's going to be 25 on the 10th of August and he's in the vote for the PFA Young Player of the Year. Does that sit right with you three? Not really. I think no. it's too old that to be... Uh, I think 23 is too old. I think, you've, you know, young player, I'd be saying 21, 21. But well, what if you broke through at 17 and you had four years playing in the Premier League? Would you... Like, what? Well, no, that's your good. You can't feel sorry for me. You can't say, oh, Brooks, it'd mean more to Brooks and so give it someone. I mean, come on, we'll, you know, this is a hard world we live in. You know, that's for, you know, the under nines when you rotate it, saying he was the most important player this week. You know, now we're talking professional football livelihoods and everything else so I don't go along with that argument but I do think it's uh, you know it's it's too old the threshold's too old I think it's I 21 and under or your f your first and second season that's it so you might start halfway through a season in your first season so you wouldn't get a full season that's why the neck you got the opportunity in the second one I think or 21 years old but I think to be 24 is not arguably a young Player of the year, is it? Because you, you shouldn't be punished for being good at 17. No, no, but I'm just, I just, I just think if you've, there's players that have had 150 appearances by the time they're, you know, 20. You wouldn't see Raheem Sterling Aaron as Hansen. a young, uh, Bernardo Silva as young players, would you? No, you, no. no, I think they're too old. But I, I also think if the cut off is 21 I, and then you break in at 17, I don't think you're excluded because you've now had two seasons at it. Because, say, in my example, I was good at 17, I was good at 18, I was good at 19 and 20, but I was rubbish at 28 and 29. 30. So, does that mean that the older players that came in late, that they've had more years at it, they get it, you know, less years than. You know, I, I just think that, you know, people are good and bad and, you know, you have different parts of your career and you should be rewarded. If you're under that threshold of 21, let's say, that's the number, then you get as many years as. as you know, if you break in at 15, well, good luck to you, you get 16. And any well, player now at 24 in a club or in a squad, you are looking to almost be a presence in the dressing room, an influence off yeah. the pitch, most definitely on it, which these players are. But yeah. if you're breaking in, like the boys say, at 17, 18, it's almost not half a career, naturally, but it's definitely too high, that age group. Yeah, I mean, Samson's captain's 23, isn't he? It's like that feels, even at that age now, like you're starting to become a kind of a serious footballer, right? Yeah. yeah. Imagine but the Ajax captain. He's got 19. He's got 200 appearances by now. But I just think yeah. it would, for David Brooks in his first season, you know, coming into the Premier League, I just think for him, it's, it's a different, it's so different for him really than for, say, Bernardo Silva and Raheem exactly. Sterling. I just think what it would mean to him in terms. So I just, in that sense, they're in different categories, really, I think, yeah. the players, just based on appearances alone. And we hear talk, don't we, about tactical voting and all that sort of stuff. As players, did you take it that seriously? Like, how much time did you give to your one, one, two, three decision when you were players? In the dressing room, it was often like, if you're trying to think of that three, sometimes there's a standout one. We spoke about Van Dyke and Sterling. There's almost an obvious choice. But then you'd be like saying, who else? Who plays fullback? Yeah. Or who else can I yeah. pick? You know, I'm, I'm almost struggling for a third one. I'll or be a honest, it one. wasn't the most serious the no. done thing. At, really? Was it, Mark? No. no, it was I a bit, bit too. I think it could be done a bit more serious with the players, maybe with the press. Did the players up for yeah. it? And take it seriously? Did you feel like it mattered oh, yeah, to the players you, you were playing it. with? Yeah. You wanted to win it, but I think as well. Let's not just think players come in and sort of turn in five minutes before training, and then what used to happen is the captain used to put had about 30-odd sheets, voting slips, used to put it on everyone's space, but you get in, you know, the physio wants to see you for half an hour to do all your pre-stuff, you need to, you know, the strength and conditioning, you need to do, do the gym, you need to go and do a chunk of your fan mail, then you, someone goes, right, you've got to do three interviews today, so you do, you know, by the time you get to it, you, yeah. I've got to get out training, you, you, as you say, yeah, who's, who's the best right back, lads? It's yeah. like, oh yeah, him, yeah, that'll do. I had and a few bits to do, but the fan mail wasn't there. That's <laughs> <laughs> But it's after all. Yeah, it depends on which time you've got, but you literally yeah. get it one morning, and then that's it, you don't see it. And if you're busy, you're busy, and you probably discard it, I don't know. OK, very interesting. Right.